Uh, good morning, everyone. Here is Carl Wei, working in the University of Hong Kong. Uh, first of all, I have to say a congratulation to your recent success in the Welcome and EPSRC Center. Uh, it's also my great pleasure to be invited for giving this talk. Uh, in search of talking about challenges, uh, I may prefer to share my research journey over the last six years in robotics, particularly for MI guided intervention. So why using MRI? Uh, I may not be going to explain the MRI physics, but probably just the advantage over the other imaging modality. Uh, this is a very unique one. MRI doesn't generate any harmful radiation. It provides very high contrast images of the soft tissue, and then you can even visualize the physiological change or pathological change of the tissue. Uh, the best feature, the best feature in MI, I am MI guided intervention is that we can even uh, visualize the temperature and then we can use that for monitoring the elevation progress. So here is an example, uh, you can see how the uh, deep brain regions being hit up by, by a laser and then you will see the very high resolution heat map color map and apart from the temperature visualization we, we even can can visualize the blood flow in a very fast uh, imaging sequence so this is the one on the heart you can see the pulsatile flow in and out from the from the heart and then the temporal resolution can be up to 33 milliseconds. So there's a lot of increasing studies on intervention, particularly for brain, prostate, breast, and cardiac catheterization. If we want to develop a robot system under the MRI, I guess there's a four major aspects we have to consider. First of all, compact robot actuation. There has to be MI safe, uh, because the MRI would generate a very high magnetic field for intervention. That could be 1.5 Tesla to 3 Tesla. Um, we also need a GPS that could provide a 3D positional tracking time by time. And also the imaging feedback has to be fast and updated frequently. So that has to be involved with fast image sequences and also image processing. And with the sensing tracking data, along with the uh, fast images, we have acting as a feedback. Uh, we have to also develop a closed loop control system uh, to, to maintain a certain uh, autonomy of the robot. In terms of actuation, uh, we prefer to use the clean energy to power up the motors. Uh, at the very beginnings, we study a lot of pneumatics approach, but however, the air dynamics is so complicated. As you know, air is a kind of compressible uh, fluid. So the, the motor may not be very responsive in response to the control command, particularly when we have a long pipeline pumping the air from the control room to the MRI room. So we turn to li liquid solution. We turn to a hydraulic transmission solution. Uh, here we use a roaring diaphragm which is already a commercial component uh, we, can, we can purchase on the market. And then with that brewing diaphragm, uh, we can pump in the low pressure of hydraulic fluid. And then, and then the brewing diaphragm can even reduce much, a lot of the uh, sliding friction because the brewing diaphragm is, can be flipped inside out. So when you move the piston left and right, you can see the diaphragm is rolling inside out by themselves. And this is much different from the using the uh, O-wing solution. You can see the sliding, slide, sliding force, sliding frictions is quite significant uh, in that kind of conventional hydraulics transmission. So we employ this rolling diaphragm to connect the, the, the robot in both sides. One is the master, which is placed in the control room, which is different by the uh, a conventional EM motors, uh, and then transmit the, 
the, the liquid through a 10 meter hydraulics pipes through the waveguide. Um, waveguide is the uh, only channel that connect the, the MRI and the control rooms. So you can see the motion in between master and slave size, they are very in sync. And the control response is, is very optimal to, to do the robot control. So here you will see, uh, we, we can't see any EM interference that would adversely affect the MRI images. Comparing to the conventional motor driven by air or piezoelectrics in the stepping mode, our hydraulics mode, uh, transmission can provide a very smooth uh, motion. Combining the three cylinder together separate in the uh, 120 degree, we can even obtain a continuous rotation in both clockwise and anti clockwise directions. So apart from the fast response, uh, that motor can even generate a very high torque for a wide range of robotics applications. So uh, one of the advantage, as I mentioned, it can provide a wide range of motion. Uh, we try to apply this kind of motor in to integrate them into a catheter robot. Uh, I can say this is a, a first MR compatible uh, catheter robot uh, decided for the cardiovascular electrophysiology, EP procedure. So you can see uh, we try to pack in the uh, standard EP catheter uh, inside the robot and the robot can, can generate a free degree of freedoms in a very smooth uh, motion manner, uh, pushing the catheter in and out, steering the catheter uh, left and right, bending the catheter, and also rolling the catheter in 160 degree. So you can see we, uh, we also developed a, a GUI, graphic user interface, to control the catheter tips. And then we put the app catheter tips inside the uh, left atrium phantom models. And then we even simulate the pulsator flow inside that phantoms model so as to validate the accuracy, validate the robot, robotics performance uh, in, in that phantom simulator. So uh, if you look at this uh, robot architecture, that may not new to you because for the non MI guided version, uh, for the conventional CT guidance or X-ray guidance, we have the robot called Amigo or uh, Hanson Robotics Company. They also develop a catheter robot. Uh, the idea is to tightly operate the catheter uh, uh, by extend the surgeon's hand uh, to that robot to control the catheter. This is not new. But however, for MRI guidance, which the motivation is another story. So if you look at the uh, environment like this, uh, in the MRI room, the EP surgeons need to overlook uh, a multiple screen, uh, one, two, three, four, five. This is a five screen he has to monitor and then not just the electroanatomical map, but he has to observe the ECG as well. And this is not a decent environment. You can see uh, he has a, a ear proof um, because the MRI environment usually because of the uh, superconductive magnet, it generates a lot of uh, noises. Uh, that noise can be beyond 100 dB. Uh, so the idea, the, the, sto the story, the motivation to have the MRI catheter robot is that we want to tightly operate the robot um, in the MRI room and then the operator can save comfort comfortably and collaborate with another operator in the control room. That would be get rid of the uh, uh, difficult com communication in between MRI and control room. So uh, I guess the, the teleoperation in this MRI guided procedure will make more sense than the non-MRI guided versions. Uh, apart from the robot actuation, uh, we also have to keep tracking the position of the instrument relative to the MRI domain. So here is an example. You will see the green color indicating the catheter tips inside the left atrium. And the tip, uh, around the tips, you will see the color changes from dark to white. Uh, you, it's indicate the lesion is being created 
due to the elevations. So one thing I want to point out here is the uh, for digital marker. Uh, this is an active one. There's a two sonoloid marker connected with the two wires, four wires. Uh, these wires connected with the receiver box. We have to do a complicated tune and match process so as to ensure the, the signal pickups is it in the high SNR. So to avoid the complicated tune and match process, uh, we attempt to develop our own version, which is the wireless checking marker. So of course, we are not the one uh, make this kind of wireless marker, but we have a very strong incentive to downscale the dimension so as to uh, integrate the marker with the robot easier. So here is the uh, one piece of circuits with multiple layer. Um, here you will see the marker has to cover on the positive agents, which is agar gel, gadolinium, or so even water. Those agents can provide positive signals uh, in the MRI. So the circuit will resonate with the lambda frequency of the MRI for 1.5 Tesla. Uh, the resonant frequency will be 64 megahertz for three tesla that will be 128 megahertz so the idea is to magnify the positive signals up to the maximum manner and then so that we can easily pick up the signals or even automatically pick up the signals in 3d or 1d 1d image sequence so here is our test uh, we so-called latency test uh, so as to find out the latency from the real-time signal measured by the scanner and then transmitted to our, our interface. So here, here we are using the cutting edge device, which is me, myself. When you will see, uh, I'm, I was moving my hand inside the head coil and then you will see the corresponding changes on the signal displays on the, on the monitor. So by measure those two uh, motion latency, uh, we will try to understand the, the, the latency roughly that will be around 30 or 25 milliseconds. And this is another test uh, to see, observe the general accuracy while we apply the motion on those two markers. And those two wireless markers is actually attached along the chopstick. In this video, you can see the jerky motion. This is not very optimal in this case, uh, which is because we still not yet uh, found out the, uh, achieved a good SNR so as to pick up the peak signals accurately along the 1D, 1D uh, sequences. So we are still carry out the improvement. I hope we can share the more te technical details uh, after this paper. So here is the research prototype and show you how we integrate the wireless marker onto the, onto the needle guide. So here we have the three marker integrated with the needle guide. And then these three points will be the sufficient number for us to register the virtual needle guide onto the uh, MRI image domain. So you will see uh, we can estimate the needle direction pointing to work the, the target inside the deep brain regions. Um, while we combine the hydraulic actuation with the uh, real-time MRI checkings, uh, we even did a, uh, a cadaver trial. And so as to demonstrate while we have the robot working inside the MRI, we can even just simplify the procedure and reduce the procedural times um, so here is exact examples. Uh, you will see the robot will adjust the target on both sides, which is so-called a bilateral procedure. And while the target is fixed inside the ball and uh, inside the uh, isocenters, the surgeons can put the needles along that fixed and uh, shape lock uh, needle position there. So this is the idea. Uh, why we use MRI because we can even estimate the brain shift. We can, we can ensure where is the target and do the positioning by the robot. So uh, as we, are, we were happy to draw much attention from our peer researcher. 
And so, along with our literature reviews, those research prototypes actually uh, gave us a very good lesson. Honestly, uh, we, we, we found a very good design trade-off in between the auto anatomy, while we want to maintain the certain uh, auto autonomies, we have to provide a sufficient number of degree of freedoms, or even the checking of the robot. But inevitably, we will also increase the size and also deteriorate the robustness of the robot. So this is something we also learn from the other uh, MI-guided robot used for breast biopsy, prostate biopsy, and neurosurgery. And then including my, those research prototypes may not be ready for um, commercialization. So therefore, uh, this is a good lesson for us to do something less ambitious. So here is another prototype, uh, also a lethal positioner. Uh, the manipulation purpose is similar. Uh, we also want to adjust the uh, lethal orientation position, uh, similar to the one we, we developed for the stereotactics uh, neurosurgery. Uh, you will see this is the um, uh, needle position uh, attached on the belly. The application is for the liver tumor ablations. Um, so again, why we so-called less ambitious uh, prototypes, which is because this robot will allow the manual control of the needles. So the robot will, will allow the operator to offset the needles at the very beginnings. And the robot will, will do the fine adjustment by itself based on that offset orientations. So in, if you're looking at the interior structure, uh, we have also the needle guide mounted with the uh, wireless marker, MRI-based wireless marker. And we also have the soft actuator driven by water or air to fine tune the uh, needle orientation in small range. And then also we have the encoder to encode the absolute orientation of the needles. And then again, we, we will have the ship locking mechanism so as to provide the steady anchorage of that needle uh, for that needle's insertions. So suppose the uh, patient sub subjects has been scanned together with the positioner. Uh, we know the relative location of that liver tumors. Um, so when the patient transfer out from the ball, um, the operator can do a course adjustment based on those night signals. Uh, we can set the night signals more or larger the error misalignment that would be red color. And then when the adjustment closer to the, to the target pointing towards to the liver target, liver tumor, um, the, the green signal will appear. So uh, this is the cause adjustment. And then once the offset is being done, uh, the operator can do the shape locking uh, on, on those uh, positioner. The shape locking is, can be even enhanced by the granular jamming inside the positioner. So that provides a very steady anchorage. Suppose when the patient subject is moved back into the MRI scanner board, uh, the robot can do the fine adjustment by itself. In this video, you can see uh, how, the, how the needle is being mobilized within a very small angle, within five degrees. And it provides a very high resolution, motion resolutions. And suppose we also apply the real-time image on the, on the liver, and then we will know the location of the liver tumors. Um, so we can measure the misalignments towards the tumor target. So based on the initial offset done by the operator, uh, the soft actuator can minimize the uh, angle errors uh, below the seal on two degree. So this is a kind of uh, proof of concept how we apply the synergy use of uh, use of the robot manipulation and the manual operations together so as to relaxing so as to relax the design criteria. So after the introduction of my research prototypes along with the technical challenges, 
uh, here's a kind of summary of something that I may miss in my academics R and D. Uh, that would probably very critical for the real uh, clinical translations. So first of all, we may focus too much on the best performance of the robot, even the average one, but miss out the consideration on what scenario or conditions the robot would perform worst, or never think about the possibility of such scenario or conditions. Uh, somehow we also may focus too much on the surgical accuracy or safety, but misunderstand the surgical workflow or underestimate the, the procedural time. Because in the end, uh, we have to demonstrate the cost effectiveness of the MI guided robotics approach. Uh, this is quite important to draw good attention or support from the industrial partners, even the MRI manufacturer that could provide you the MR, uh, API or research interface of the MRI. So while having the close collaboration with industry, we expect we will understand better how to target the robot into a more suitable market. So, uh, by the way, I, I don't have the shortcut solution at this moment, but as working in the academics R&D, for me, I just revisit this R&D components cycle by cycle, so as to make things closer to the translations. So last but not least, uh, without my team, without my funding agency, I would never have a chance to touch with those research opportunities. And here I would, I would like to say thank you to them. So this is, that's all my presentations. Um, I hope you enjoy it.